Ever since the first version of Python was released to the public in 1989, its versioning system has stayed the same. The exact specifics of how things are released and when exact version numbers go up has changed over the years, but the versioning system itself, a modified version of Semver, has stayed the same. However, that could all be about to change with proposals to switch Python from a Semver system to a Calver system. And of course, because Python always has to be different, it's a modified version of the Calver system. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the proposals which are outlined in a PEP. It is still in draft at the moment, so it may or may not happen. But before that, I want to talk to you about CodeCrafters. CodeCrafters is a service that provides programming challenges for beginners and advanced users alike. You can choose whatever language you like, and if you're new to a language, you can select an easy mode, and if you're used to a language, you can select an advanced mode to give you the right level of challenge. All the challenges are focused around building your own system. So building your own Redis or building your own Docker or Shell or Git. And on top of anything you may learn with the language you use, you also get to learn the underlying processes and ideologies behind all these systems and how things interact better. I've been tackling a few different challenges and the step-by-step -step nature and the instructional nature of them is really nice. And also if you get stuck, you get to look at some code examples of what other people have done and that can give you some inspiration as to what to do next. If any of that sounds interesting to you, you can sign up for free using the link in the description. And if you upgrade, you can get 40% of any plan that you select. Again, that's 40% of any plan using the link in the description with CodeCrafters. But with all that out of the way, let's see what these proposals are all about. The proposals themselves lie in PEP 2026, which is very aptly named considering what year this is going to start if it gets approved. It's currently in draft, it was only created about 10 days ago. Uh, so we'll see what happens, I suppose. But the general idea of the PEP is for Python to switch to a specific type of calendar versioning rather than the semantic versioning or the flavor of semantic versioning that it uses at the moment. Uh, so it'll be starting with Python 3.15, not 3.14. I'll talk about that why uh, later. But we'll see that the version will be 3 and then a short year dot micro. So the 3 will stay the same, the micro will stay the same, but the year will change. So instead of uh, Python 3.15 releasing in 2026, it'll be Python 3.26 releasing in 2026. And this is an October release still. So it will be October and then the year will be uh, the version. And this helps with a few things. So this helps um, specifically with end of life uh, calculations. Python versions reach end of life five years after their first final version has been published. And that'll be a lot easier to calculate if it's a year. So Python 3.26 will release in 2026. And so it will reach end of life uh, five years after that in 2031. And the same for 3.27 will be released in 2037. End of life, five years beyond that, 2032. It's a lot simpler to work out. And this is made possible, I guess is the word to use, uh, by PEP602. So uh, PEP602 introduced the annual release cycle for Python, which brought in the 17 month development cadence, which allowed uh, Python releases to be released every year in October. So every single year, the version number is going up. But if I scroll down a little bit, uh, we'll see that it is sort of calendar based as described here, and it's offset by 11 years. So 3.15 release in 2026, 3.16, 27, etc., 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 and the new system will line up because it is essentially calendar versioning already. It's just not matched to the year. It wasn't always the case, of course, that Python was released yearly. That started with 3.9, uh, so it's a, a relatively new innovation, which is why it hasn't been changed yet. The reason why specifically it's been proposed now is Hugo Van. I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Caminade. Kemene, I really don't know, I'm so sorry. Uh, but he is the release manager for Python 3.14, and I believe through Python 3.16, well, he, uh, he'll be it. Uh, but because he's the release manager, he's been a proponent of calendar versioning for a little while, I believe. And so he's bringing this in now that he's release manager. So if we take a more detailed look at the specification, we can see that three is the major version number. And it says here, it is always three. There will never be a Python 4. So this pet pretty much destroys any chance of there ever being a Python 4, which makes sense because it, it has become a bit problematic 
with regards to you know expectations surrounding it and you know whether or not it would be around or not uh, so much so that in the year 2100 should both them be around that long uh, the version will be 3.100 rather than 4 and this will allow python 3 specifically to remain as the brand so python and python 3 are both synonymous in that they describe the brand uh, the second point here is that you know the year is the uh, the minor version number. It's a short year, so you can think of it as the year minus two thousand. And then micro is the micro version number. This will work exactly the same as it does currently. So there'll be a new release every two months, and it'll be bug fix and security releases. So this backwards compatibility section and the rejected ideas section over here talk more in detail about why this exact version of Calvo was selected rather than using something like Python 26. And it's simply because it's just safer. It keeps uh, backwards compatibility in a number of ways and it allows us to keep the Python 3 executable as well. So if I go down to the rejected ideas section, I'll talk a, a little bit about some of these. So platform compatibility tags are one of them. And these are used when packaging things. So I believe they're used in wheels and stuff like that. And Python 3.10, we had uh, 310, so it's just an integer number string. But if Python were to change to using, say, Python 26 instead of Python 3, then you'd eventually get to Python 31. And then this 310 could either mean 3.10 or version 31. Uh, there was a PEP641 to address this using underscores, but it was eventually rejected because it wasn't known what side effects there would be and it was considered just safer to keep it as Python 3 and then have the minor version as the version number. Uh, there are things with ecosystem changes as well, which talk about roughly the same things. The Python 3 command, again, it's just more effort that needs to be expended for a problem that doesn't really need to exist. And the same thing with uh, yy.mm versioning. They thought about that, but they rejected it for the same reason. Uh, 3.2026 using the full year is just not quite as clean and that introduces backwards incompatibilities with the version number being two digits. They did actually talk about additions as well, which is pretty funny. So those that aren't in the know, Rust uses additions and you can have different versions of Rust and you need to have different additions and these different additions are what represent breaking changes. So the actual versions in the API remain stable and it's the additions that change things. And then we're thinking of bringing that in for Python, but it didn't really make much sense as pretty much every minor version of Python, even under its SEMVAR system, brings in bre uh, breaking changes. There are always deprecations, there are always removals, there are always changes. And doing it like this just means that you have to track two versions rather than one, and it's just not really workable. They did also consider skipping Python 4 and moving on to Python 5 and 6 in 2027 and so on, but they decided that they wanted the benefits of cal um, calendar versioning. So they didn't go with that either. And the reason I said at the start it wasn't going to happen for Python 3.13 is Pi. Someone actually acknowledged it. I'm so happy. I've had a number of comments, especially on my 3.13 videos, talking about 3.14 being Python in the next release. And one of these peps actually acknowledged it. And I'm, I'm so happy. Let me know what you think of these proposals in the comments. Do keep in mind that these aren't accepted yet. They may be rejected still. I actually think it makes a lot of sense. I'd thought about this before. I'm not normally a proponent of Calva. I find it really annoying when people on the Python package index use it because there's just no information regarding what is a breaking change and what is it but for something huge like an operating system, Ubuntu uses it. And for a programming language like Python, where every minor version breaks things anyway, because there are deprecations and removals in every release, it makes sense to just match that to the year for the extra convenience. And I also think in that keeping the Python 3, so having the 3 as the major version also makes sense. It breaks less things. It's a little bit more recognizable. You still will lose Python's uh, 3.15 through 25 but i think that's probably fine it's not going to break any version constraints or anything it might just be a bit weird for a bit but i think overall it's a good change if you're looking to learn some cool tips and tricks about python i would heavily recommend the python is awesome series which will be linked in the end cards but i'll see you next time for whatever we do next